Hello everyone, welcome to the Archipelago Edits live stream. My name is Liam, one of the developers here at Archipelago where we create Lightroom presets and create profiles for photographers. And this is the second episode of Archipelago Edits where we fo uh, focus on a different photographic style for each episode. So we did the first one of these about a month ago. We took a look at the dark and moody editing style. So if you missed that stream, you can re-watch that on our YouTube channel. So do check that out when you have the time. But this one, we're going to be going to the opposite end of the spectrum and taking a look at light and airy edits. So very excited. I've got five amazing images submitted by our community that I'll be editing with. So I'll show you those shortly. Uh, so if you like the sound of that, you want to get involved, you can submit your images for future uh, edit sessions. And every photographer that is featured in these live streams will be getting a free preset collection of their choice. So if you like the sound of it, you can go ahead and submit. There's actually a link in the description uh, to allow you to upload your raw files. Make sure you rename it with your full name and if you want your Instagram handle as well, just so we know who it's from. And then I'll be selecting from that pool of images for future live streams. Uh, so if you have submitted already and you haven't seen your, your image shown in the previous live stream or in this one, don't worry, it could still be selected for a future live stream. But of course, if you want to, you can continue to submit images as we go along as well. So do send more to us. We always like to see those. So we'll get underway shortly. Like I said, we're going to be taking a look at the light and airy uh, photographic style. So I'll be talking a little bit about how to capture that in camera, some best practices. I'll be showcasing some of the best presets and tools that we have to help with the light and airy mood as well. And of course, as always, answer any questions you have as we go along. So I can see we've got a few people in the chat down here. MK's on. Welcome, MK. We've got Leon as well. Howdy, Lee. Richard's on. Sarah's on. Glad to hear you're excited, Sarah. Me too. Got some amazing images for this one. Can't see me, but we're twinning in the gray. Oh, nice. Yeah. Got to represent the Patagonias. Love it. All right. So we'll get underway shortly. Um, just and you know just while we're kind of uh, while i've got your attention uh, do interact in the chat as we go through the stream so it just helps me to know that you're there that you're liking what you see if you have questions do let me know uh, we might even send some stickers out to some people in the chat so just interact as you go through let me know what you think to the edits if you have questions let me know like i said we've got some amazing images we'll be editing with today so as i go through this stream you're going to see the photographer's name up in the top left over here so we know who the image is by you'll also see the exif data there as well for uh, the the lens focal length and settings that we use to capture uh, so as we go through you'll see the five images that i've selected for the stream and as i mentioned each of these photographers will be getting a free preset collection of their choice so if you do see your image in this stream if you submit it and you see your image pop up uh, do reach out to us. We'll drop an email in the chat, but that's support at archipelagopresets.com and we can get that free preset collection sorted out for you. So yeah, we've got this first image here. Uh, this one's by Shalina. I'll go through and I'll, I'll edit with this one in just a moment, but uh, like I said, we've got the name up the top there. We've got the EXIF data. And before we dive in, you know, we're talking about light and airy edits. Uh, and actually, while I'm just sort of getting the exposure and things corrected on this, uh, the first thing to think about really, as always with photography, is how do you achieve that look from the point that you're shooting the image? So it's all good and well thinking about that when you come to post-production, but there's lots of uh, important elements that come together to create the image and editing is just one part of that. So as you can see with this beautiful image we have uh, by Shalina, we've got the subject sat on these boulders just by the edge of a river. A really gorgeous scene. This one's shot on a 35mm lens, so nice and wide, but we have an f2.5 aperture. Uh, and actually, that's going to give us something that is really important when it comes to a light and airy edit, and that is depth of field. So it's not necessarily essential, but one part of creating a light and airy look is to have separation between the subject and the background. And we do that typically with a shallower depth of field, creating blur in the background and reducing the amount of uh, distracting details and creating that sort of softer look. So this one's shot, like I said, at f2.5. It's a wide lens, 35 mil, so it's not super, super shallow. But if we zoom in here, you can see we've got a nice amount of separation between the background and the subject. 
subjects nice and uh, sharp, and then we have this softness down here. If this was shot at a really narrow aperture, we'd have loads of definition and detail in the grass and in the water, and that could become really distracting from the image. So that softer sort of focus can really help with a light and airy look. And then the other thing that Shalina's done really well with this, so we've got really, really soft, flat lighting, and that can also help massively when we talk about light and airy as well. So you may think, oh, you, light and area, you just need as much light as possible. But if we talk about strong direct light, that actually will cast really strong shadows as well. And that's not something that you typically want when you're editing in a light and airy style. So generally speaking for light and airy, you want to have uh, quite flat lighting. So this looks like it's an overcast day or a certainly very filtered light. So we've got very, very soft uh, light, very soft shadows and that's gonna help us to create this light and airy look. So that's really, really important as well. You could also shoot in open shade and you can shoot with a uh, backlight, as long as the backlight is again, very filtered and not too direct and harsh. So Shalina's done a great job with the lighting for this, that beautiful natural light. We've got that nice shallow depth of field. So we've got a really good starting point for a light and airy edit. So let's have a quick look. I don't think I need to correct uh, too much with this. Like I said, I brought up the exposure a bit. I'm just going to have a look at the white balance, bring up the warmth just a tiny touch, and maybe just a smidge of magenta. So that's looking good to me as a starting point. So when it comes to the presets, the first set that I'm going to use is the 4x5 or 4.5 film set. So that is a, a set that emulates a large format film and it has a really beautiful, soft, filmic, light and airy look to it. So Archipelago 4.5 film. I'll just run through the presets first and then I'll select which one I want to use for this image. So you can see as we run down there, we've got a gorgeous starting point just with one click. I'm not going to go black and white, I'm going to edit in colour because I'm loving the colours we've got in this. And I'm thinking probably preset one. I like the, uh, the sort of neutral look it has. Skin tones look really nice. I like the warmth in the brown in the hat and then also the tone that we're getting from the greens. So I'm going to choose AP451. So now that I've selected the preset, I'm just going to play around with the exposure. I'm just going to bring it up a little bit more. Just being careful not to bring it up too high and blow out the details in the subject. But, you know, we're going light and airy, so it's quite important that we have a nice light look to the image. So I think somewhere around there looks good. Uh, I'm quite happy with the profile. I don't think I want to increase or decrease that. I'm going to leave that set to 100. I am just going to use film grain B. That'll just uh, reduce the film grain so it's a little bit more subtle looking, but that's looking really nice as a starting point. Richard has agreed, says 01 for sure. All right, so what else do I want to do this? I think the first thing I want to do is just boost the contrast a little bit. So one of the tools that's included with the 4x5 set is the Film Contrast Plus. And one great thing that we can do now is adjust the strength of a preset with the amount slider at the top left. So I can go ahead and back this off. That's it at zero, that's it at 200, which is way too much. And I'm gonna go for somewhere between zero and 100, I think. So around about there is looking good to me. So I'm just looking for a nice level of contrast. Again, we're looking for that separation between the foreground and the background. We're looking for those uh, nice pastel-y filmic colors. Uh, I might wanna bring up the warmth just a tiny touch. Yep, somewhere around there looks really nice to me. Okay, so next up, I'm gonna use a tool from a set that is not yet released, but will be out very, very soon, and that is the Archipelago AI tool set. So this is actually, listen up, this is important, this is actually a free preset collection that's available if you are a subscriber to our Archipelago Presets newsletter. So uh, I'm sure we'll throw a link in the description, but if you sign up to our newsletter, we'll be sharing this to all of our newsletter subscribers very soon. So you'll want to sign up now. Uh, and this is a set of presets that take advantage of the AI functionality that's been added to the new versions of a Lightroom. So it can understand where a subject is, it can understand where uh, the sky is, uh, things like that. So this is an advanced set of tools that will use that functionality. Um, and if I go ahead and open this set, I'm not going to walk through the whole set because obviously this is more about a light and airy edit, but I'll just kind of use a few of the tools that are in here. So you can see we've got a few subject tools, things like Shadow Plus and Sharpen and Soften. Uh, we can also change the hue of the skin tones. 
we've got sky saver we've got a few uh, sky specific tools in there as well and then we have a few stylistic tools we've got things that replicate uh, reflectors so both a gold and a silver reflector and a few other tools in there as well so there's one specific one i'm going to use for this edit and that is called watercolor so what this does is it, it essentially selects everything but the subject so as you can see there's no effect on the subject as i hover over this but what, what it does to the background is it lifts the shadows and it boosts a little bit of that saturation as well so if i select the preset and then I've got the amount slider again. This is it at zero. This is it all the way up at 200. So I'm going to use this just to add a little bit more softness to the background. It will also boost the saturation as well. I'm just going to back that off a little bit. So I'm going to maybe set it around about there. So 190. I'm going to go into the mask itself. And then I'm just going to dial the saturation back. So I don't want too much of the saturation part. But this is without and this is with watercolor. So that's just softening up that background. It's just bringing a little bit more color back in there, lifting those shadows up and creating a little bit more balance between the subject and the background. Generally speaking, uh, a lot of the time, so with the dark and moody edit that I did, we're kind of darkening the background. We're doing things like vignettes, all that kind of stuff to make the subject pop out. But with light and airy, you kind of go the opposite way. You generally find balance between the background and the subject. And typically speaking, you'll have a background that has less contrast and the subject is generally the most uh, contrasty part of the image. So it's kind of a little bit of a different approach to something like dark and moody where you darken the background, pop the subject. Uh, in this case, you pop the subject by adding contrast and soften up the background. So that's looking nice to me. One other thing I might wanna do, I'm just gonna check in the lens corrections. And again, this can be really important because this is going to not only fix the distortion in the image, but it's also going to fix the vignette. So the corners, as you can see, are a little bit darker. And when we do that, it's just going to brighten those corners up. And again, when we talk about light and airy, it's just lifting those shadows. It's making sure there's not anything sort of deep. Uh, the vignette, I think I'm going to bring back down just a tiny, tiny little bit. So what I'm looking at is just to make sure that this area of water looks uniform rather than getting too bright, the corners are too dark. And also the foliage here looks about right as well. So that's without it and that's with the correction. So subtle, but definitely aids in that light and airy look. All right, so let's take a look at where we started. So this is the unedited image. A gorgeous starting point. Obviously it's a little bit underexposed, so we brought the exposure up quite a bit. And then this is with AP45 preset one. We've used the watercolor tool from the upcoming Archipelago AI tool set. Uh, we added some contrast with the film contrast tool from uh, Archipelago 4x5 as well. And I think if I was to do one more thing to this, it would probably just be to use one of the blurs, Film Blur B, which will just soften up the edges of the frame here. Again, just drawing the eye to the center. So that would be the final image. Here's the side by side. So we've got a few more people tuning in. Hey, Chris, thanks for joining. Emily says, so excited about these. Oh, wow, love that. Thank you very much, Emily. Woohoo, that tool will be super helpful for challenging open shade backgrounds. Yeah, I'm probably gonna use it a couple more times in this uh, in this stream, so you'll get to see it in a couple of other situations as well, but it's definitely something I really, really like. If you've got a background that's sort of really deep shadow uh, or it's lacking in kind of uh, color and saturation uh, watercolor is a really really nice preset so lauren's just put in there hey to the live chat keep chatting throughout the live editing session for a chance to win the ai tool set before it releases there we go so we're actually going to give away a pre-release copy of this ai tool set to someone in the chat at the end of the stream. So there's a good incentive to keep chatting as we go through this. Love that, thanks Lauren. All right, so first image done. There's before, there's after. Nice light and area edit. Like I said, really good starting point and that will help a huge amount. If you are shooting in conditions that don't lend themselves to light and airy, you are gonna struggle to achieve that. So it's really, really important that you think about that type of uh, thing when you're shooting and that will translate into a better edit. So gorgeous image there from Shalina. Thank you so much for submitting, Shalina. Uh, if you are watching this back, you are winning a free pre preset collection of your choice. So do reach out to us. We'll get that sorted out for you. So onto the next image, this one here by Jessenia. I love this. 
We have uh, an image shot on 85 mil lens, one of my favorite focal lengths. Uh, this naturally will give us what we we're talking about before, that separation between the subject and the background. This was shot at f2.8, same as the last image, but because this one is shot on a longer focal length, we're gonna see much more blur in the background, much more separation between those two. So that's really gonna help us with the light and airy look. And again, we've got that nice flat light in. We're in a bit of a wooded area here, so that's giving a little bit of uh, shade. And it also looks like it's an overcast day as well, which is gonna help. So we, again, nice soft light, nice soft shadows. That's what we want as a starting point. So let's start by bringing the exposure up. Uh, white balance is looking good. It's maybe a tiny bit warm. We'll start with that and we'll play with it from there. I'm gonna go ahead and check out the lens corrections. Sometimes lens corrections uh, are on as default. Uh, so certain camera manufacturers will apply lens correction as default, others won't, so it's always worth checking. So we can see that's without and with. Quite subtle, not a huge amount of vignette from this one, but it definitely lifts up those corners a little bit. Makes it a little bit more natural looking. All right, for this one, let's use something from quest let's go for quest 20 quest 19 sorry so we're going to go quest 19 we'll go for one of the elements presets so let's take a look at these element air element earth fire spirit and water and i think it's got to be air i love that that green toning that we're getting in the background so let's take a look at the profile. No, I think I quite like it up where it is. Let's just increase the exposure a little bit. So that's looking good as a starting point. All right, so let me show you something that I tend to do if I wanna try and achieve uh, a light and airy look. So again, we can use this new AI functionality with the masking. We can jump in the mask panel, go ahead and select the subject. So there we go, we've got the subject selected there. And then what we're gonna do is press the invert button and that's now gonna select everything but the subject. It's done a fairly good job, but obviously you can see here it's not selected the bottle, but that's okay. It's not gonna have much of a bearing on this image. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna reduce the contrast in the background to lift up the shadows, reduce the highlights and create a bit of a softer look. So I'm gonna bring the contrast down. And as I do that, you can see that it softens the background up without affecting the subjects at all. So I'm gonna bring all the way down, minus 100. So that's looking really nice. I don't need to do anything else in here. I'm quite happy with just the contrast being reduced. And now I can just tweak the exposure. Just gonna increase the temperature again a little bit, just looking at skin tones. That's looking a little bit more natural to me. All right, let's use another tool from the AI tool set. Let's use um, Hazy Light. So what this will do is it's gonna further what we've just done there by softening up the light in the image. So it uses the uh, selective functionality to select luminance within the scene without affecting the subject. So if I apply Hazy Light, this is it at zero, this is it at 200. So just gonna soften up and diffuse the light in the scene, which is exactly what we want. So I'm not gonna go too high with that. I'll probably just leave it at the default of 100. It's just gonna further push what we've done uh, with the contrast in the background there. So that's looking good to me. Again, I'll probably throw a blur on there from four by five. Let's go for blur B, that's my favorite one. And we can increase or decrease that. I'll go for a little bit of an increase on that. Lovely, so that's looking good. So let's see the before and after. And here's the side by side. So again, we've had quite an increase in the exposure, uh, you know, relatively underexposed image initially. We've lifted that up quite a bit. We've corrected the white balance and then we've applied Element Air from Quest 19. Uh, we have used the Hazy Light tool from the upcoming AI tool set. Uh, we've also adjusted the background uh, by reducing the contrast and softening up that area of the image. So by doing that, we now don't have these sort of harsh, dark lines that are formed by the trunks of the trees uh, and anywhere that's sort of like the branches here that are really, really dark. We've lifted all that up. We've got the nice pastel colors in the, uh, in the greenery, in the foliage, and lovely separation between the foreground and the background with the subjects there. All right, let's catch up on the chat, what we're saying. 
waiting for the first of the month for the new presets is like waiting for Christmas. Yes, Emily. Speaking of that, we'll have a live stream in a couple of weeks time showcasing the upcoming set, which is right there, Quest 20. I'm not gonna show you here, but Quest 20 is in my library right now. But I'm not gonna show you that. Uh, but we'll have a live stream in a couple of weeks time that's gonna showcase Quest 20 before that comes out on the first of next month. Uh, if you don't know what Quest is, go to archipelagoquest.com and check that out. It's our monthly preset subscription where you get a new set every single month for free as part of your subscription price. And next month's set is absolutely amazing. Speaking of what we did in the last episode, the Dark and Moody, if you like that kind of look, Quest 20 is going to be your bag. It's gorgeous. Love that softened background, says Lauren. Thank you, Lauren. Kareem's on from Egypt. Welcome, Kareem. Thank you so much for joining. Brooke says, I hope mine gets picked too. Have to wait and see. All right, so let's move on to the next image. This one by Sarah, also known as Soko. I absolutely adore this photo, super, super nice. I love the styling, this headdress and the, it looks like earrings as well, gorgeous. I love the color of the dress. This one, again, when we talk about what we we're talking about before in terms of the light and the depth of field, looks like this was shot just after golden hour. It looks like the sun's just dipped behind the trees or behind the horizon. Uh, so we've got that nice, soft, diffused light. And we've also got a focal length at 70 mil, f2.8. So again, nice separation between the, the subject and the background. So a nice crisp subject, a nice soft background that's really gonna help with the look. <clears throat> Jesus says, question, when you don't download the preset before the month ends, do you lose it? Um, no, don't worry. If you are a subscriber and you, for whatever reason, uh, life's passing you by and you miss downloading that preset during that month, just reach out to us on support. Uh, we have a separate email for Quest support, which is on the Quest site. Reach out to us through there. We can sort that out for you. It's not a problem. Um, at the end of the month, it will go into the archive. So for anyone that's joining later, you can go and buy previously released sets in the archive store. That's exclusive for subscribers. Um, but uh, yeah, if you are subscribed and you just don't happen to download it that month, uh, for whatever reason, just reach out to us and we can sort that out. Ideally, you want to be there downloading it on the first so you can get it straight away, get those new tools. Uh, but yeah, not an issue. Just reach out to us. All right, so let's let's edit this one by Sarah. So again, we're starting with a really nice image. Uh, there's not much that needs to be done to this. Maybe just bringing the exposure up just a little bit. That's looking good to me. I think the white balance is good, but I'll go ahead and set the preset and we'll, we'll kind of see what's happening from there. So for this, let's use, let's use another quest set. We'll go for LXCQ. So LXCQ is part of the LXC family of presets. So if you know LXCR presets, uh, LXCQ is a quest specific set. And this one has a light and air profile. So let's take a look at these presets and I'll decide which one to use. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna go for AQ12-1 LXCQ. So as you can see, it sets the light and air profile as default. And there's this handy tool uh, that's included uh, that's just called light and air. And when you select this, what it will do is it'll actually apply the lens corrections and it'll set light and air to 100 in one go. So nice handy tool. If I go ahead and select that, you can see sets the profile there adds the lens correction. So we've got that nice clean starting point for that light and airy look. So I'm gonna bring the exposure back down a little bit just to offset that. And let's play around with the profile. Yeah, it's looking really nice. I think, let's go for it all the way up. Really push that light and airy look. So I'm just gonna balance the uh, exposure. So that's looking good to me. Again, let's take a look at the watercolor. Yeah, so you can see on this one, it's a, it's a massive difference. So if we take a look at certainly where the trees are here and a little bit of this grass behind the subject there, as it currently stands, it does look nice and light and airy, but when we apply watercolor, you can see just how much that softens up the background, makes that much, uh, much lighter, much more pastel, and that's then gonna bring more emphasis to the subject. So let's go ahead and apply that. That's of course set at the default of 100. From there, I can increase or decrease that. So I think maybe a tiny little bit of an increase. Nothing too drastic. 
So let's take a look at that. That's without, and that's with. So looking very nice. And then let's also do subject sharpen. This one's a really handy tool. This is just gonna uh, sharpen the subject uh, nice and easily. So it just selects the subject, increases the, the sharpness. Um, and again, because we've got that slider, I can just set that. So I'm just gonna bring it to around right about there, about 26. It's just a little bit more clarity and sharpness to the subject. Again, that's gonna emphasize the difference between the nice sharp subject and the soft uh, bokeh in the background. So if I go ahead and zoom in, that's looking really nice. If I show you the before and then after. So really, really gorgeous. I love the color tones, love the styling. Here's the side-by-side -side comparison. MK says, been loving these live streams. Nice company while editing. Oh, that's a good idea, actually. I never thought about that. Edit while you're watching the live stream. That's a great idea. Get some inspiration while you're uh, while you're editing away. Dinah says, wow, amazing photo. It certainly is. I agree with you completely. Elizabeth says, so pretty. Lauren says, obsessed with this photo. Immense photo and edit, says Lee. Thank you very much, Lee. Yeah, I don't think there's anything else I'd do with that. I think the uh, the presets giving us a really nice base. That light and air profile works wonders just to lift those shadows. Um, obviously, we've used the watercolor, uh, increased that a little bit. So that's from our AI tool set. That's lifted up those shadows, add a little bit more saturation into the background as well. So it just gives us that nice color palette. I would probably, let's have a look. Yeah, I'd probably just, if it was my image, I'd probably just add a little bit of grain, maybe grain B, just so we get that nice filmic look. Uh, grain A is something a little bit stronger. But for this, I like grain B. Yeah, that would be the final image. All right, rolling on. This next image here from Ivana. This one, again, is shot with 35 mil, so we've got a bit of a wider field of view. Uh, but this one is shot at f1.4. So again, although it's a wider lens and you're gonna get less of that kind of separation between the subject and their surroundings, uh, because we're shooting very wide, this is actually wide open on this lens at f1.4, it will create a little bit of that depth to the image, which is gonna look lovely. All right, so let's start by straightening things up just a tiny bit. Somewhere around there looks good to me. Let's bring the exposure up. So with an image like this where we have strong backlight, uh, what I'm mainly looking at is the subjects, making sure that the exposure looks correct on the subjects themselves, and then we'll kind of worry about the background after. So I think somewhere around there looks good. I'm gonna bring the warmth up a little bit as well, not too high, but just a bit. Around the tint, maybe a tiny increase in the tint there. So that's looking good as a starting point. All right, so let's go for Quest 6. So AQ6. And we'll take a look at one of these. I think it's going to be. Three, just because I like what it's doing to the light in the background. So AQ6-3. And this one, we have the emulsion profile. So this one emulates different film emulsions. So if we drag it to the left, you can see what that does to the greens in this image. Drag it to the right, and we get those sort of more uh, tealy blue colored greens. So for this, I quite like it backed off to, say, around about there. So there's a little bit of that effect, but I quite like the more natural looking greens. So that's given us a really nice base to start with. Let's keep using watercolor because I think it works so well for these light and airy edits. So yeah, this is going to work really well. So what we can see is through that uh, the window there. It's obviously a glass house of some kind. Uh, you can see you lose a lot of the detail out there. But when we use watercolor, it's going to bring some of that back. So this is it at zero. This is it at 200. So it's going to bring down those highlights. It's going to bring uh, a little bit more detail in there. We also lift up the shadows and again, add some more saturation in. This is quite a muted uh, preset. So the Quest 6 is, is relatively muted. So we can actually afford to increase uh, watercolor quite a bit and that'll still look really natural. Especially when you talk about that light and airy edit, uh, you tend to find that it has quite a nice pop of color, certainly greens. So I'm gonna go, yeah, I'm gonna crank that up to 170, it's looking good. 
so we could do a subject sharpen on this one as well, just because they're in the distance there, just to make sure we've got a little bit of clarity on them. And let's have a look. I think the only other thing I might do is in HSL, I'm going to go to the luminance. I'm just going to bring the yellows down a tiny little bit and the greens down a tiny little bit. And then I can afford to bring the overall exposure up. Here we go, somewhere around there. So I'm liking that. I love this sort of uh, pop of uh, light coming through between the subjects. We've got nice exposure on the subjects themselves. We've lifted up the shadows uh, in the um, greenery around them and obviously added a bit more saturation in there for that lovely colorful filmic look and of course that's also with the watercolor preset it's also brought more definition into the uh, into the glass doors here as well so here's before and here's after loving that edit super nice Diana says it looks so dreamy. Just gorgeous, says Sarah. Renee says, do you ever just use a brush to lower the highlights in her dress? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, if I find that I need to do a selective edit of any kind, um, yeah, I'll, I'll jump in and do that. I'll either do it with a brush or I'll do it with the, the new subject masking and then use a brush because you can intersect with a brush. Um, so I'll do that sometimes as well, uh, but only if it needs it. I, I don't tend to kind of go too overboard with that sort of thing, because if you think about, you know, shooting a wedding or any type of uh, portrait shoot or anything where there's a volume of images, if you get too finicky, it can take an inordinate amount of time and it's probably only you that will notice it. Um, so I'll only really do it if it's something that's, that's really necessary. I try and uh, keep my edits fairly, fairly simple. Um, and just achieving the stylistic look that I want and unless something's really distracting. Uh, so for instance, if we go back to the first image, this one, um, I would remove this little, it looks like a rock or something here. I probably remove that just because I find that a little bit distracting. And then there's a couple of like smaller, uh, I'm guessing like little bugs that are flying around. I'd probably remove those from the image. So just that, but probably not too much else. Um, so yeah, it just depends on the image, but I try not to go uh, too over the top with selective edits like that. Soft and dreamy. Thank you very much, yeah. So again, another wonderful image here. This one by Ivana. Thank you so much for submitting your image. Again, get in touch with us. We'll get you a free preset collection sorted out. All right, so. I'll bring the exposure from this one. This one here by Laura Bryan. We've got a bit of a theme going here. We've got another sort of river shot with the greenery. Uh, it's not intentional, but it is another gorgeous photo. So this one, uh, another 85 mil shot. This one's shot wide open at f1.4. So we've got that really, really shallow depth of field. And that works so nicely on a, a subject like this where they're you know, off uh, in the distance a little bit. They're a bit smaller in the frame. There's gonna be a real amount of separation. And we can see when we zoom in, the subject's nice and sharp. We can see it's a really, really slim um, area that's in focus. And then everything in front of that and behind that drops out into that nice soft bokeh. So again, lovely textures. It just softens up the textures in the background so it prevents those from being too distracting. Looks like we're shaded by the trees again. Uh, it looks like it could be a relatively sunny, bright day, but because we're in the trees and it looks like they're a bit lower down, it's very filtered, very shaded, so that's gonna help again. So the first thing I wanna do with this after increasing the exposure is just bring in the uh, temperature up a little bit. Let's look at the tint, maybe a tiny little increase in the tint. That's looking good to me. All right, what should we use on this one? I think we'll go for another LXCQ edit. And I'm liking one again, it's just nicely balanced between the warm toning and the cool toning. So we can use light and air. It's gonna apply the, uh, the profile and it's gonna do the uh, corrections. Now in this case, it's done a huge amount of correction with the vignette, so I'm actually gonna bring that back. I don't want that to be too drastic. So I'm gonna go somewhere around there. That looks relatively balanced with the background. So now I can bring the overall exposure back down. 
Yeah, that's looking good to me. Okay, so profile wise, yeah, I'm probably gonna leave it about there. So that's set to 133, so a little bit of an increase of the profile. Again, let's take a look at watercolor. So that's gonna work super well on this. We can see it's lifting up uh, the shadows. It's adding a little bit more saturation into the greenery, which just gives a nice offset against the subject's hair color, which is absolutely stunning. So I think for this, we can go all the way up 200 because this doesn't look too overly saturated. It just looks like a nice pop of that green and it contrasts really nice against the subject's hair there. Let's have a look. Yep, I think somewhere around there looks good. All right, anything else we want to do with this? I don't think there's too much. I would maybe just push the blur a little bit more with blur B. Yeah, blur B. And again, put some grain on there. Film grain B. So there's before. Obviously, we've increased the exposure again on this one quite a bit. Underexposed image to start with. Uh, but we increased the exposure. We've uh, corrected the white balance. We've applied LXCQ, uh, which is the Quest 12 set, LXCQ1, uh, with the light and air profile set to 133. And then we've used the watercolor tool from the AI tool set to just soften up and lift the background, just giving us that nice amount of separation there. So I'll show you without the watercolor, that's what it looks like. That's just the preset and the changes that we made. And that's with watercolor. So it just adds a really nice pastel look to the background. Again, really suitable for light and airy. It works in lots of other situations as well. So when you get your hands on this set, you'll see that um, these tools really work across a whole broad range um, and spectrum of different styles. Uh, some of the other tools in here, so Silver Reflector, Gold Reflector, I've been using those on loads of images. They essentially uh, replicate the look of using a reflector, which is something I do use sometimes, but if I forget to take one, what it will do is it'll lift uh, the subject, it'll lighten the subject up and darken the background down, which can be a really nice look. Uh, we've also got uh, the sky tools, so these can uh, bring back detail in the sky. Sky Saver will bring the exposure of the sky down, it'll bring back detail in the sky, so if you've kind of lost some detail there, you can bring that back. Sky Detail will also push that. Sky Blue, if you're finding that when you're editing, your sky is, is changing color and you want it to be a nice crisp blue, the Sky Blue preset will do that for you. It'll select the sky and it'll bring blue back into that sky. So <clears throat> if you like the warmth of the edit, but you don't want the sky to uh, be sacrificed, you want that to be nice and blue, Sky Blue does that for you. And then like I said, we've also got the subject tools there. So sharpening the subject, softening the subject. Subject soften for close-up portraits is amazing. It basically softens the skin of the subject whilst maintaining uh, sharpness. It works incredibly well and it's amazing how well it works uh, in comparison to what you would need to do going into either the brush panels and doing it manually or going into Photoshop and doing things like skin uh, separation, th things like that. So um, yeah, incredible tools. Like I said, that preset collection is free. You just need to be a newsletter subscriber. So subscribe now and we'll be sending that out at some point in the next uh, couple of weeks. Uh, so those tools are gonna be an absolute game changer. Elizabeth said that rock was driving me crazy too. Glad to know it's not just me. Yeah, I, I tend to get a little bit OTT sometimes. I have to stop myself because otherwise I just spend too long editing an image. So I try and make myself just kind of overlook those things because a lot of other people wouldn't notice them. Lee says, wow, that's a stunner. That red hair really sets it off. Yeah. Currently editing an entire high school senior session with my absolute fave LXCQ. Ah, nice to hear that, Julia. Um, with one and three, the subject pop as needed, so good. Yeah, subject pop from their uh, Quest 18 Arbor. That's been getting a lot of love. Again, that uses that AI functionality to uh, darken the background and lift the subject up out of the scene. Uh, Rene says, what is the name of these presets? Uh, depends what you want to mean. So we've got uh, the, the preset that we've used on this is Quest 12 LXCQ. So that's part of our Quest subscription series. Uh, so yeah, that's Quest 12 LXCQ. And then the tools that we've been using are from the upcoming AI tool set. 
And Chris says, I like The Rock. It'd be too perfect p perfect otherwise. Yeah, this is the thing. I, I sometimes over, over perfect an image by just going and editing it. So I try and force myself to just kind of overlook things like that. MK says, I'm also working on a senior with LXCR. Nice. Love it. Okay, so that brings us to the end of the stream. These are the five images that we've edited with today. Again, big thank you to everyone that submitted images so far. Like I said, the link is in the description of this video if you want to submit your images for a future stream. Um, so each of the photographers featured here, you will be getting a free preset collection of your choice. So if you've seen your image, do get in contact with us, uh, support at archipelagopresets.com and we'll get that sorted out for you. And for everyone else, go ahead, submit your images. I uh, would love to see those. Uh, so yeah, like I said, we're gonna do these once a month, different photographic styles every time. So just submit your images, make sure your name's in the file name. And if you want, put your Instagram handle in there as well. And we'll be selecting images as we move forward and continue with this series. So yes, do subscribe both to YouTube and to our newsletter. We'll have the AI tool set coming out very soon for our newsletter subscribers. So if you get subscribed now uh, and subscribe to our YouTube channel, we've got over, I think it's over a hundred videos on there now, more than 30 hours of video content. There's tutorials on there. There's more live streams on there. So there's so much stuff to go at. So definitely subscribe to the channel. Uh, give the videos a like, especially this one while you're on it. Uh, that really helps us out to push the videos out to more people. So we'll go ahead and announce a winner in just a moment. Okay, so Lauren's just announced everyone who commented will get the AI tool set. You just have to have commented in the live chat. Incredible, look at that. Giving it away, look, giving it away. Great, so if you've been here during the stream and you've interacted in the chat, reach out to us via the email that Lauren's put in there. We will sort that out for you. So you're gonna get your hands on the AI tool set early. Like I said, lots of incredible tools in there that use the AI functionality in Lightroom uh, to help you achieve your edits. So a nice little gift for joining the stream. Uh, but yeah, big thank you for joining. Uh, it means a lot for you coming along here. I love doing these streams. A uh, great way to showcase different editing styles. Like I said, we'll have another one of these in a couple of weeks time. And that one will be focused around Quest 20, which is gonna be coming out on the 1st of October. So if you're intrigued to see what's coming out as part of our Quest subscription series, come and join me for that. Where we'll share the, the date for that very soon. But if you subscribe to the channel, you get notifications as soon as we put up uh, any videos, including the upcoming live streams. But yeah, thank you very much again to the photographers for submitting the images absolutely gorgeous photos thank you to everyone for joining in the chat it was great to connect with you and i'll see you again in another one of these take care